All right. Good morning. What's up, everybody? Matt Moga here with another live stream of Fast Break Bets presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this time, 11 a.m., giving out picks for every single game, going uh, up until and through the first round of the NBA playoffs. So you're stuck with me for at least the next couple of weeks. Um, as for today, nine game slate, only two of which are games that I'm not going to have any picks for. Uh, passing on the Lakers, Wizards, both teams are on the second night of a back to back. Just need to see who's going to end up playing in that game. And then for Grizzlies Bucks, there actually are some plays that I, I that I like in that game, but right now there are no player prop odds out except for two players. So I would say if you're looking to bet those two games specifically, make sure to check out the Betting Pros app as the day goes on. But the rest of the seven games we'll have plays for. We'll, we'll also end with the same game parlay as well. <clears throat> to do a quick recap from last stream, unfortunately, was was another rough stream that now makes it two in a row that haven't been uh, great for us. We were on such a nice streak prior to that. We were so close to getting in the green for the year. But the last two streams, two streams ago was a bunch of hooks. Last stream was blowouts and just um, targeting guys where other players end up blowing up on the team. That's how it goes. That's how that's how sports betting goes. That's what happens. Um, while you're in here, make sure obviously to subscribe to the betting pros YouTube channel, if you are not already. And then the most important thing, and it's going to be even more important as the grosser, these regular season games get, and then as the more important playoff games get, get all of your questions, your comments, your concerns, whatever it may be in the chat, whether it's a play that you like in a game that you just want to shout out. I'll also give it a shout out on the stream, whether it's a question you have about a game or if like a, a play or angle that I looked into something like that. The better these streams go is when they're the most interactive. So all of the chats you can get in the chat would be great. Uh, and then the last thing before we get into today's bangers, I want to talk to you about DraftKings Sportsbook. I mean, listen, we're in the final four, right? The thrill and excitement of March Mania, March Madness, the final four is here. And DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn five bucks into $150 Instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. For As for this weekend, the two heavy favorites, obviously, are Purdue and UConn. If you think they are both going to win uh, to get to the finals, and then you think UConn is going to win the finals, you can get that exact result at minus 115 odds at DraftKings. If you think something crazier is going to happen, NC State's going to win plus 1,600 title. Uh, you can get them to win the title. Same thing for Alabama. Tons of options if you're looking to bet on March Madness. Again, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use promo code FANTASYPROS. New customers can uh, bet 5 bucks and turn that into $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code FANTASYPROS. The crown is yours. Mike Thompson, yesterday was a rough night. The uh, short that I did for betting pros was actually pretty good, 3-1 and one on those. Uh, but apologize, apologies that you had a rough night. We'll turn it around tonight. Very confident in what we have today. The first play that we're going to go ahead and lock in here is in the Blazers versus Hornets. I'm taking DeAndre Ayton over six and a half first quarter points. Best offered at plus 102 odds per the betting pros consensus. Or you can see what the most up-to-date odds are on DraftKings on the screen as well. Now, Blazers Hornets is admittedly a pretty gross game. I generally actually try to avoid these because it's just so hard to know what's going to happen. But I actually think this is a really, really good spot for DeAndre Ayton. And I love this play. His main line point total is 22 and a half. That's not a number he has exceeded very frequently, very often recently. But if you look at his first quarter stats specifically, much, much better. This is a classic situation that a bunch of NBA teams do. But when you have a big man that's important to your defense, they have a, such a higher usage rate in the first quarter than in the rest of the game. And this is a thing that coaches do. They talk about it all the time. You want your center to be engaged on the defensive end. The way to get them engaged on the decent defensive end is to start the game, giving them a bunch of touches that and when all, that dates back all the way to Kendrick Perkins, who would always get the first post touch of the game. So looking at his last 10 games, DeAndre Ayton's for the Blazers, Blazers who are just tanking with the best of them. He has gone over six and a half first quarter points in six of his last 10 games. And in two of the games that he missed, he had exactly six. So he got exactly three buckets. That would be a bummer if that happened. Obviously, the lower the numbers get, the more likely you are to get hooked. But it at least shows that he has the uh, floor 
to get us above the six and a half number. In terms, uh, in terms of his minutes, he normally gets subbed out around the nine minute mark, something like that. Sometimes he'll play nine minutes. Sometimes he'll play over 11 minutes. But if we can at least just get him to the nine minute mark, I'll feel pretty good about that. And then in terms of the matchup against the centers, Nick Richards is out tonight. And recently centers have just been blowing up against the Hornets, right? The only uh, or excuse me, five of the last six centers against the Hornets have cashed their point total over under. Now that includes the entire game. I couldn't find data on first quarter props specifically, but the only player that did miss their um, point total over under against the Hornets recently in that stretch was Kristaps Porzingis. He cashed his uh, first quarter point total over under that. I do know for a fact, he also had 20 points and his over under was 20 and a half. So it slowed down a little bit at the end, but he had a good game overall. So again, I love this DeAndre Ayton first quarter points prop. I've really dove into the first quarter market recently. It uh, it bit us yesterday as it was my only play that didn't hit, but 4-0 on first quarter props prior to that. So I'm not scared off yet. That's our first play. And then reminder, I'm passing on Lakers versus Wizards. Uh, the head coach, Darvin Ham, came out and said that uh, LeBron and Anthony Davis are expected to play. It's, it's a good matchup against the Wizards if they do. I just need to see it first. But there will probably will be some, some good angles in this matchup. Uh, Sam Young, uh, what's up, man? Bounce back night. Miller threes and Cunningham is going off tonight. Actually, I looked at the Miller props as well. I ended up passing on him. But Cunningham, you're on to something because our next play is in the Pistons versus Hawks game. And I am taking Kay to Cunningham, who you just mentioned, taking him to record eight plus assists, plus 120 odds at um, the best offered price per the betting pros consensus. Or again, you can look and see what it's offered at on DraftKings as well. Now, this is another pretty gross game and admittedly betting on the Pistons sounds terrifying, but kind of quietly like DeAndre Ayton, Cade has been playing pretty well recently. He's cashed eight or more assists in six of his last 10 games. Now, in this 10-game stretch, the beginning half of it, there was a stretch where he had cashed it in five of six. Then he missed it in three straight games, and then he cashed it last game with eight assists. And really, the Pistons just don't have any players left to play the point guard role for the team. Uh, Simone Fontecchio is out. Osar Thompson, who's technically not a point guard, but he's a good passer. He's out. And then for this game specifically, Marcus Sasser is questionable. Jaden Ivey is going to play, but he's not a pass-first point guard. He's a slasher that only really looks to score. Now, Cade is questionable as well, but if he ends up getting ruled out, then we'll just have this play re refunded. No harm, no foul there. And if he does end up playing, it's a great spot for his assist number. It's a great matchup that we're targeting here. The Hawks are listed as giving up literally the most assists per game to Cade Cunningham's playmaking style in the entire NBA. Now, Cade missed it in the last game these two teams played, the game before that, and this will be the third game of the, of the season for them. So the first game... He had 12 assists, and more importantly, he had 22 potential assists. It's also good news that Jalen Duran is back for the Pistons. He's a great pick-and-roll partner for Cade Cunningham to rack up assists that way. Now, the Hawks' defense, they're not like the worst in the NBA at guarding pick-and-roll roll men, but they are among the bottom five. And Cade is tied for third in the NBA in terms of pick-and-roll possessions run per game as the main ball handler. So he runs a ton of pick-and-rolls. He's a really, really good passer with good floor vision. And if you look at um, assists via drives specifically, he's second on the team in the last 10 games in assists as like driving. But Marcus Sasser is the one ahead of him. And if he ends up getting ruled out, obviously that would be very helpful for Cade. Even if Sasser is in, I would like to play. I just think that's a bonus if Sasser gets ruled out. So let's hope for that. But regardless, I'm in on this play. I think it's a good one. So we're two picks down. Before I get into the next one, I want to talk to you about the Betting Pros Discord. If you're looking to up your game in sports betting, look no further than the Discord community. You can find it at bettingpros.com slash chat. In the Discord, Betting Pros has gathered a team of expert handicappers providing you with free picks. And I do want to emphasize the free part because there's a lot of paid nonsense out there. Not the case here. And it, whatever time of year is going on, Whatever sports are being played at that time of year, those are the picks that you can find in the Discord. So right now we're talking March Madness, men's, women's March Madness. Over the summer, obviously we're going to be heavy on baseball. Then there's soccer. Then there's WNBA. we got hockey going on right now. Whatever market you're looking for, player props, game props, live betting, futures, anything you can look for, you can find in the Discord. Get in on the action. Connect with like-minded sports betting enthusiasts. 
elevate your own betting strategy by picking the brain of the pros in the Discord. Join us today. Take your sports betting experience to the next level. All right, next up, Thunder versus Celtics. In theory, this should be a really good game. We don't really know who's playing. The Thunder are on the second half of a back-to-back, and both SGA and uh, Jalen Williams missed last night's games. Hopefully, they do play tonight. Regardless, the play that I am on is Derek White over two and a half first quarter points. It's a little bit juiced at minus 135 odds per the betting pros consensus, but this is another smash play, in my opinion. Getting this at three and a half is a huge, huge deal. Even at the gross odds of minus 135, which I admittedly don't like, I think this is a really good play. For starters, White has cashed this in eight of his last 10 games. Now, the two games that he missed, he didn't score at all. He literally had zero points. In one of those games, he only played half of the first quarter minutes. He literally played at six. That's rare for him. He normally plays the eight, nine, sometimes even 10 minutes in the first quarter. And in the other game he missed, that was against the Pelicans. And if you look into that game, both Jalen Brown and Kristaps Porzingis went off in the first quarter of that game. Now, Jalen Brown is currently listed as questionable for tonight. He missed last game. Again, he's questionable tonight. In the last game in which uh, Brown missed, Derek White had five points in the first quarter. I was on his over three and a half first quarter points in that game. No big deal. Even if Brown does end up playing, I would still be in on this play at this current price. And if get, if Brown gets ruled out, then I'm almost guaranteed, would almost guarantee that the uh, price for this is going to go up. Right? right now, it's two and a half. I would be shocked. You'd get that at three and a half or probably minus money if Brown gets ruled out. And if he's in, it's still a really, really good play. The Thunder do have a good defense, but... If you look at Derek White's shooting profile, the Thunder are giving up the eighth most points per game to his shooting profile. So it's not like it's a completely stay away type of matchup. And in terms of everything else, I just absolutely love this play. That is our fourth one. Next up, Pacers versus Nets. I'm going back to the well with Cam Thomas over 24 and a half points. Best offered at minus 112 odds per the betting pros consensus. So I was on this play on Monday. He had what, 12 points? In the first quarter, I think he had 13 or 15 at halftime. I was feeling good about it. Then the Nets got just completely and utterly blown out. So he went under scoring 22 points in 29 minutes. But the matchup is just as good as it was on Monday. And I find it unlikely that the Nets are going to be blown out by 30 points heading into the fourth quarter like they were last game. It's the classic flip-flop method. Whatever happened last game, generally the not the exact opposite, but close to the opposite starts to happen. So the Pacers blew them out last game. I think this game is going to be pretty close tonight. And as for the matchup, it's just beautiful for Cam Thomas. On the entire season, the Pacers are giving up the most points per game, both to isolation scores and to pick and roll ball handler at ball handlers as well. Basically, anybody that can drive is going to score points against the Pacers. And Cam Thomas, again, this is looking at the entire year. He leads the Nets both in points per game via via isolation and as the main pick and roll ball handler as well. That includes, again, the whole season, even though his minutes have been spotty. If you look at recently, he's been playing a ton, even including last game in which he only played 29 minutes. In the last 10 games, he's averaging 36.8 minutes per game. So those numbers that we're looking at, points via isolation, points as the main pick and roll ball handler, that's just gone up recently, even though for whatever reason, you can't track specifically at uh, recent data. But what you can do is look at recent data specifically at points via drives and scoring via isolation, scoring as the main pick and roll ball handler. That's that's driving to the hoop, right? And over the past 10 games, Cam Thomas is fourth in the entire NBA, not even on the team, not even like most on the nets, but fourth literally in the entire NBA in terms of points per game, specifically via drives. And that's exactly how you score against the Pacers. You drive to the hoop, you get to the rim or close to it. So I'm more than comfortable backing Cam Thomas after missing it last game. Um, Halliburton torched them last game. They're playing zero defense on point guards. Yeah, I know a lot of people were on the three-point prop for Halliburton uh, last game. I unfortunately was not. I missed that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you wanted to go back to the well on Halliburton, even though it did just cash, I don't think that's terrible. <coughs> excuse me. Next up. Uh, excuse me, before we get into the next pick, I want to talk to you about a one-year premium subscription giveaway. <clears throat> if you want a chance to win a premium one-year subscription to Betting Pros, it's <clears throat> it's your place to start betting smarter, not harder. All you need to do is subscribe to the Betting Pros YouTube channel. Hopefully, you're already doing that. You're already subscribed. And then comment. Those two things 
And that's how you could be entered. A winner will be announced right here on the channel. So make sure to turn notifications on so you can be alerted when new episodes drop, come in and claim your prize. But a one-year premium subscription giveaway. Comment, subscribe, and you're good to go. All right, we're about halfway done. Uh, the next game on the list here is technically Grizzlies Bucks, but remember, we are passing on that game. Last I checked, there were only player prop odds out for Giannis and for Jaron Jackson Jr. I, and this is a gross play, think it's a great spot for Luke Kennard, who is going to get most of the guard work on the Grizzlies. Odds aren't out for him yet. I need to see what they come out as before I, I decide whether that's a play or not. So again, check the app for the most recent up-to-date odds, and then you can follow me um, at my Twitter handle at Jedi Modi, and I'll post out anything that I end up playing over the course of the day. But again, the app will give you all that information as well. The next game that I am going to talk about is in the Raptors versus Timberwolves game. I'm taking Anthony Edwards over two and a half made three pointers, plus one at 25 odds per the betting pros consensus. Now this play is one of my favorites. It is the ultimate ultimate fade of recent re results. This is going to feel about as gross as a play can possibly feel. That's also the reason why I love it so, so very much. Looking at his last three games, Anthony Edwards has not made a single three-pointer. Literally 0-19 in his past three games. If you go back to the past four games, he's made one three-pointer and he's won for his last 23. That's excellent. I love the fact that he hasn't made a three-pointer because it just makes the odds way more favorable than they ever would be. And he has an excellent, excellent matchup tonight against the Raptors. Perfect matchup to break out of your shooting slump. A reason why I love this play so much. The Raptors have just been horrendous, just so bad at guarding the three-point line recently. Last night, they allowed four Lakers separately to go over their three-point prop. That includes D'Angelo Russell. He hit seven three-pointers against them. The game before that against the Sixers, the Raptors allowed three separate pl separate players to go over their three-point prop, but not only did they go over, they annihilated their over. Nick Batum had five made three-pointers. Kelly Oubre had six. Both of their over-unders were one and a half. And then the game before that against the Knicks, same thing. A bunch of guys went over the three-point prop, including Miles McBride, Miles McBride, who crushed his over. Someone on the Wizard, or excuse me, the Timberwolves, someone on the Timberwolves is going to crush their three-point prop. And I love for it to be Anthony Edwards at the value of plus 125. Like, I think that he is really going to try to get um, himself out of this recent slump that he's in because when the playoffs come, he's not going to have time to afford to get out of a shooting slump, right? Like the West playoffs is going to be a gauntlet. So tonight it's target practice against the Raptors. I love this play. Uh, Mike Thompson, risky, but I like it. That's what I love to hear. Uh, do you like Nas and Gobert on rebounds too? Yes. Uh, so I didn't look at Gobert rebounds. I do know that the Raptors are giving up a, a, a ton of rebounds specifically to centers. So I don't know what the number is. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be a pretty high number. And there's always a risk with blowout potential with, with games like this. But yeah, I mean, maybe like a first quarter rebounds is probably the way to go because he'll probably at least play normal minutes in the first quarter. So you don't get you don't get um, the risk of whether, whether it ends up being a blowout or not. Chris Rod Rodriguez, love the play. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, all right. Next up, Magic versus Pelicans. Another three-point prop. Actually, the last three are going to be. Uh, for this one, Magic Pelicans, I'm taking Jalen Suggs over. One and a half made at three-pointers. A little bit juiced again at minus 135 odds. This is best offered at DraftKings. It, this was just live right before I checked. I was sure that the odds were going to skyrocket up. It hasn't happened yet. So I would definitely make sure to lock this play in if you haven't already. Same alert to the Derek White one. I don't love... Minus 135 odds, but I do think that it's still a play at that number. And I love this play. I was shocked, and I just want to make sure. 145 now, I would still I would still lock in. I still think it's worth it there. Um, I was shocked that you could even get this at one and a half. I was confident that his over-under was going to be two and a half. Number one, he's made two or more three-pointers in eight of his last 10 games. So his hit rate recently is, is very good for one and a half made three-pointers. And the way that the Pelicans play defense it's perfect for Jalen Suggs to get up a ton of three-point attempts. In his last 10 games, one of the games in which he went over was against the Pelicans when he made three three-pointers on a whopping eight attempts. The reason why this is such a good play, in my opinion, it's because of how the Pelicans play defense. They will leave shooters wide open from three-point range. And when I say wide open, I mean NBA.com defines them as wide open, which is defined as six-plus feet of space on the entire season. 
The Pelicans are allowing the highest frequency of three-pointers against them be considered wide open at 24% over the last 10 games. That number is up to 24.6%. And in the last 10 games, that would be the second most in the NBA. Last game alone, look at the three-point props against the Pelicans. Devin Booker attempted 16. He, <clears throat> he made eight. Kevin Durant attempted 11. I think he only made three, but he attempted 11. They'll just, even like those guys, obviously you're going to look out for Kevin Durant, Devin Booker. They still got up 27 combined three-point attempts. And over the past 10 games, Jalen Suggs both takes and makes the most wide open three-pointers on the Magic. He's quietly turned himself into a pretty decent shooter when he's left wide open. He's not a movement shooter, not someone you're going to run off screens like Clay and Steph. Of course not. But if he's wide open, he can knock him down. On, in his last 10 games, he's shooting 51.4% on wide open three-point attempts. So full one unit McSlam on him to go over one and a half. I also like laddering him to three plus made three pointers as well. I put a half unit on that one. <clears throat> another, again, another really good play. That one's not a fate of recent results, admittedly. <clears throat> Excuse me. This next one is Cavaliers versus Suns. Grayson Allen over two and a half made three pointers. Best offered at minus 117 odds per the betting pros consensus. This is similar to Anthony Edwards. <clears throat> another fade of recent results that I absolutely love. And he's also similar to Cam Thomas and that I went with him on Monday, got burned, and very confident going with him again tonight. So as I mentioned, that game on Monday where we had Grayson Allen three-pointers, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker combined for 27. That is remarkably an outlier. Ke Booker had been ice cold from three-point range, basically since he came back from his uh, sprained ankle a couple weeks ago. He went eight of 16 yesterday. That is not going to happen game over game. That is an immediately a, a situation that I immediately want to fade, immediately meaning literally the next game. So I think this is a great smash spot for Grayson Allen and his three-pointers. The Cavaliers, they've quietly not done a good job guarding three-pointers recently. They're allowing teams to shoot 40.1% on three-pointers over the last 10 games. That's the fourth highest percentage against in that same span. <clears throat> now, they're not quite the Pelicans in terms of leaving guys wide open from three, but they are in the top third. They're like around 10th in terms of frequency of three-pointers that are considered wide open and in just strictly raw attempts, three-point attempts against that are considered wide open as well. Even recently in which Allen has had a little bit of a downswing with his shooting, he is still both taking and making the most wide open three-pointers in the NBA over the past 10 games. Again, that includes his slump recently in terms of made three-pointers. He's not shooting horribly. He just isn't attempting as much. Even that small amount that he's attempting is still the most in the entire NBA in terms of wide open three-pointers. He's shooting 44.1% on about six wide open three-pointers per game. That's almost getting you to the three number just on wide open attempts alone. And the fact that we are able to fade recent results with Booker and KD attempting 27, which is nuts. I think this is an awesome play. I have not yet. I recommend laddering him to four. And that's our last play of the game. Our same game parlay is going to be in the Magic versus Pelicans game. There were two plays that I really liked on this one, so I decided to put them in the same game parlay. It's plus 212 odds. The first leg is Jalen Suggs over one and a half made at three-pointers. I already talked to you about that one. I love this play. He can make a ton of wide open three-pointers. The Pelicans leave a ton of wide open three-pointers. And then the next play, it's CJ McCollum over 21 and a half points. So pick and roll guards that can pull up from mid-range and three-point range. Those are really the only types of shots, the only types of players that have success against the Magic. And this is a nice fade of recent results as CJ did not have a great game at last game out as well. So two-leg parlay plus 212 odds. Jalen Suggs over one and a half made three-pointers. CJ McCollum over 21 and a half points. And that was my same game parlay of the day. If those of you watching are looking to build your own same game parlay, check out the Betting Pros Same Game Parlay Builder. In SGPs, you combine multiple bets within a single NBA game. You can leverage different types of um, insights that you're looking for on how to build it, meaning you can leverage correlated bet recommendations. How correlated are the plays are to each other? EV ratings, just find the highest uh, expected value plays of the game or Cover probability, just look at plays that have the most likelihood of hitting. Much more, perfect your betting strategy by analyzing betting pros, uh, correlation grades, projections. Stay ahead of the curve by looking at other same game parlays placed by fellow bettors on the app. 
Start building the winning parlays today at bettingpros.com slash parlay. And that's all we got. Love, actually really liked the board that we have today. So I'm confident that we're going to have a great day bouncing back from a rough day the previous two. Hope everybody has a great Wednesday. Um, I'm not going to be streaming on Friday. I'm going to be out of town as I posted on my social media. So last stream for the week, we'll be back next week. Appreciate everybody who was tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to the Betting Pros YouTube channel, all that good stuff, and have a good one.